In this box, we've got the 2025 Asus Chromebook Plus CX14, an entry-level to mid-range clamshell 14-inch Chromebook Plus model. This particular one has this year's Intel Core 3 N355 processor with 8GB of low-power DDR5 RAM and 128GB of eMMC storage, but I'll get more into model variations later in the video. For power, we've got the standard Asus Puck-style 45W USB-C charger, and of course, to go along with that, I've got a UK wall plug. I paid £240, that's about $320 US dollars for this brand new, which seems to be the lowest price we've seen in the UK for the 128 gig of storage model since this launched around May time. As usual, I've posted any deals and price reductions I've spotted to X, Threads and Blue Sky. We're almost into the Chromebook itself now, when you can already see that the colour is the same rock grey from Asus in what they call their painting texture, as we saw earlier in the year when I unboxed the larger Chromebook Plus CX. X15. I'm not the biggest fan of it to be honest, the colour is a bit on the boring side to me and the texture feels a little bit cheapy, but it does seem fairly resistant to marks and scuffs or at least cleans up easily enough. The US spec site also lists a colour called Misty Grey, but I haven't seen that available in the UK. You may have also seen my recent video on the much lower spec 2025 Asus Chromebook CX14, so no plus there. These models have the very odd choice of the 2021 Intel Celeron N45 500 processor, and they actually seem to have a much more interesting range of colours and textures than Asus have given the Chromebook Plus version. I'll link to that video and the one on the larger Chromebook Plus CX15 in the pinned comment of this video. Back to the Chromebook Plus CX14 and it feels okay in the hand. It is a full plastic build of course, but it's feeling fairly rigid without any great flex, and having all rounded corners is always a plus point. The weight of it feels manageable for a 14 inch Chromebook, coming in at 1.38 kg that's about 3.0 pounds, probably about average for this size. And for ports, it's pretty much all happening on the left hand side. There's the charge and power LED indicator, the first of two USB-C 3.2 Gen 1 ports, an HDMI version 1.4B port, a full size USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, the second USB-C port, and a headphone microphone combo jack for audio. On the right hand side, it's pretty lonely with just the Kensington Nano port for if you need to lock this one down. For wireless connectivity, it's Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. Looking underneath the Chromebook, and you'll find the grill on the bottom for the ventilation, as that Intel Core 3 and 355 processor does have a fan for cooling. Unfortunately, we're also finding the speakers down here, so it's never going to be optimal with sound firing down. So they're here, rather than being up on the keyboard deck, firing sound up at you. Speaking of which, the display does go back 180 degrees against the Chromebook's body, which is nice to see and the keyboard deck itself is looking fairly nice. It benefits from the newer Chromebook keyboard layout with the quick insert key over here on the left where the old launcher used to be and that means we've got the new launcher key on the bottom row, it's branded with Google's G and next to it we find the function key and all of the keys across the top row and now labelled with a corresponding F value 2, bringing it that much closer to the standard Windows layout. Unfortunately for the UK market we have got the smaller enter key which is never desirable it just takes a bit of getting used to when you're typing. And speaking of which, I've found from a quick test that I can still be fairly accurate. The key travel itself, I'd say, is medium to that little bit longer, and the keyboard is benefiting from being fully backlit. The touchpad size is okay, certainly not the largest, it is of course all plastic, and it feels fairly smooth. There's certainly none of the looseness that I experienced on the particular Chromebook Plus CX-15 model that I had. Taps and clicks feel like they're going to be okay. Having now powered on the Chromebook and set up my test user, let's test out a bit of Real Racing 3. And we can see that the 2025 Intel Core 3 N355 processor is handling it without issue. The 8GB of RAM will certainly be helping, the US spec site also lists a 16 gig of RAM option and the storage I've got in this one is eMMC and that's going to be the same whether you have this 128 gig option like I have or the 256 gig option. All Acer's Chromebook Plus CX14 will see Chrome OS updates all the way through to June 2035, so a nice long update life there. You'll of course get the benefit of all the Chromebook Plus software exclusives, including features like text capture launched earlier this year. This is pretty practical in that you can grab text 
extra images and convert it into calendar appointments or dump it all into a Google Doc so you can edit it. You can check out my video from the Chromebook Showcase back in June if you want to see more of these latest features. Checking out the 14 inch IPS non-touch display in a bit more detail and it's looking generally good. It has a full HD resolution but needed bumping up from the out of the box configuration and it's in a classic 16 by 9 aspect ratio with a matte finish. It's looking fairly bright at a claim 300 nits of brightness but I may have guessed a little lower at say 250. Interestingly the US spec site does list a touch display option and it's slightly less bright at that 250 nits. I'd say the bezel appearance is fair on the sides and a bit more noticeable at the top and the bottom. In the top bezel you'll find the Full HD webcam with a manual privacy slider. I just wish they made it a bit more easy to control without needing to use your nail. And to go with that, again being Chromebook Plus, you'll benefit from the extra video and audio controls. So if everything is continuing to seem familiar, this really is just seeming to me like a smaller version of the Asus Chromebook Plus CX-15 that I unboxed earlier in the year. As a bit of a bonus, I'm showing you more of them here side by side. And if you do like this style and extra content, please do remember to give the video a like by clicking on the thumbs up icon. It really does help the video reach a wider audience. Whilst we're comparing Chromebooks, here's the regular 2025 CX-14 with the Celeron N4500 up against the Chromebook Plus CX-15. 14 as well. You can see their chassis on the outside look very similar, perhaps just missing a port, but there's obviously a big difference inside as well as the display which is notably dimmer on the regular CX-14 as you'd expect from the spec sheets. I guess there's one other Chromebook people may naturally compare this 2025 Chromebook Plus CX-14 to and that's this, the slightly older yet slightly more premium Asus Chromebook Plus CX-34. Certainly right now in the UK their price points aren't too dissimilar. If you want to check that Chromebook Plus CX-34 out in more detail, that's the video on the left of your screen to watch next. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a full side-by-side -side comparison of the two. Otherwise, the YouTube algorithm thinks you'd prefer the video on the right to watch next. Cheers.